Danny Flexen here for seconds out. Delighted to be joined by heavyweight contender Otto Valin. Otto, how are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. Um, last time I saw you was way back uh, in April, Dillian White, uh, Tyson Fury show, I believe. Um, but you fought since then, uh, got a points win over Rydell Booker. Just tell us your reflections on that performance and, and why have we not seen you back out since then? Oh, uh, well, I mean, it was a good fight. I, you know, stay busy fight just to stay active and uh, while we try to, you know, get bigger fights. Um, so, yeah, got the job done there. And then I've been training and I've uh, been waiting, try to get something big lined up for me. And I guess my team is struggling to get a real significant fight right now. But hopefully that will be soon. And that's really what we're waiting for. I had to take these two, you know, stay busy fights. And now I'm ready for something bigger. Yeah, so previous to Booker was uh, Camille Sokolovsky over here, of course. What, how challenging is it to get motivated for those fights when you know you've mixed in world class and shown that you belong there? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of hard to go from fighting Fury and, and guys like that to fight, uh, you know, these uh, lower level guys. And, and I think that, you know, you don't really have anything to gain or to win, really. You only have, have things to lose. So uh, kind of for me, yes, you know, took, took those fights, stay busy, stay active and yeah, not to take too, too many risks, to be honest. But both of those guys, uh, Sokolowski and, and Ryder Bukit, they're not bad fighters. So yes, you know, they've been matched tough and everything. So, you know, good, good fights for me. And we're coming off a big heavyweight fight here not too long ago between Joe Joyce and Joseph Parker. Joyce secured the WBO interim title with his victory. I spoke to his team earlier this week and they were saying, you know, they don't expect Joyce to get his world title shot until next year, maybe the summer. So they want to keep him busy in the interim. You were one of the names put forward as a potential opponent for Joyce. What, what would you think of that fight? I think that's great. I think we actually had an offer uh, to fight Joyce uh, this summer. It was a little short notice and we didn't think that it made sense with the money. We, we wanted more. So that's why we didn't take it. But if they can come up with, the, with a good offer, I think that could be a good fight. And, you know, he is, he's proven now that he is one of the best and he's, he's doing really well. I think like, to fight a guy like him, you need a really good game plan. And there's some, some tools you really need to work on to be able to beat him. And, uh, you know, I think, I think I'm one of the guys that can actually give him a lot of trouble. Why is that? Where, where do you think you have the advantages that perhaps his previous opponents haven't been able to take advantage of? Well, I think you have to be very smart with him. He's, uh, I wouldn't say a one-trick pony, but he has his style and he does that really well. But you need to, you need to be very smart with him and, and uh, you know, you, you need to pick your battles. And, uh, yeah. I mean, a lot of people, when they talk about Joyce, who have fought him, say when you watch him from outside or on TV, he seems like this slow, robotic guy. But the thing that surprises you once you're in there is how quickly he makes up the room with his feet, but also how persistent he is. His work rate is unlike most heavyweights. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I've seen him since since the amateurs. And, and so I think I got a pretty good idea of who he is. And I know that he's good and he, you know... I, he got the Olympic silver medal. Maybe he should have won that fight even. And then uh, saw him spar Joshua when I was there. So I, I've known about him for a while. It's a good little route um, to the top table as well, because with the WBO rules, you wouldn't have to then fight for the full title necessarily if the winner of an undisputed fight or, or Usyk, if he doesn't take that fight, gives the belt up. The WBO tend to just upgrade the interim champion. So if you beat Joyce, that could be upgraded later on to a full world title. Well, that would be amazing. I mean, uh, I would love to fight for the world title. That's that's really my goal. So I think that would be perfect. Did you um, watch Joyce against Parker? Yeah, I watched it. What did you make of his performance in that one? I mean, he did good. Uh, I was actually, I thought it was going to be a really tough fight. I, I said that it was a 50-50 fight, but... If I had to pick one, I, I'd pick Parker to win. Because mm. I thought that he was going to use his speed and, and movements to, you know, to beat Joyce. And when I saw him with Christian Hammer, you know, taking big shots like that, 
we know he has a really good chin, but uh, I just felt that, you know, you can't really take that when you're Parker, you know, decent puncher. So I I had a feeling that Parker was going to win, but but Joyce, I mean, he did really good and, I mean, got the knockout, so there was no question about it. Uh, felt like Parker maybe, I mean, he came in at, at his highest ever, and uh, I think that played more into Joyce's favor than anything because, uh, you know, he was getting involved with Joyce too much and, and couldn't move his feet that much. And elsewhere in the heavyweight division, coming up, we have a fight between Huey Fury, um, Tyson's cousin, and Michael Hunter, who's uh, not who's known for upsetting the odds over here in the past. What do you make of that fight? An interesting clash of styles. Yeah, pretty interesting. We see what Huey is going to be doing now. I believe he's been out for a while. And mm. so is Hunter, I think. So, so we see what they do. And, uh, you know, it's an interesting fight. And... Um, the winner probably be in a pretty good position to get a big fight. Is that something you, you fancy, the winner of those two? Yeah, I think that could make sense. Uh, that could be a good fight, I think. And uh, I think that would be good fights for me, both of them. Now, at the very top of the division, uh, Tyson Fury, you're used to seeing him try and mess around in the ring. He seems to be messing around Joshua and uh, <laughs> Eddie Hearn outside the ring at the moment. What have you made, like, kind of watching from a distance all this stuff going on? I mean, you can't take anything that Fury says serious, to be honest. <laughs> he assesses whatever he feels in that moment, and then he says something else. At first, he was retired. Then he was going to fight Joshua for free. Now he's going to, you know, fight for 500 million. And then Monday, that was the deadline. Now he's come back and said to give him some more time. So... I mean, it seems like they're working on that fight. Maybe that's what they want, but it's very hard to read your you can't trust anything that he says. And I mean, if he's gonna fight Char, I take that as a joke, to be honest. That's not a competitive fight. And you know, for him to fight him right now, I mean, doesn't look good to me. Does it make it even worse in that the Joshua fight was mooted and then it moves to Char? So it's kind of even more of an anti-climax than if he just fought Char in the first place. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And uh, but he Fury might try to, you know, uh, scare the Joshua team to sign the contract or whatever by saying that he's gonna fight Char or, or whatever his deadlines this and that. Uh, but I mean, I think uh, Josh and his team they should probably just focus on what uh, Fury's people are saying and not what actually what Tyson is saying. If the fight does come off and it's they're talking about early December, it's not that long after Joshua's second successive defeat to Alexander Usyk. How much chance do you give Joshua in that fight? Different skill set in this case than Usyk, but not a long time to recover from the defeat. Yeah, I, th I think it's too fast, too soon for Joshua. I mean, coming off uh, two losses like that, uh, his, uh, I mean, his um, confidence can't be at top right now. So if I was there, I would take, you know, two, three fights before getting too into another fight like that. And, and but if Joshua has no injuries and everything, uh, maybe he can go in there and, and make it a good fight. But Fury is going to be a big favorite, and I think Fury has really the tools to make Joshua look bad and and really doubt himself. And bringing it back to you, do you feel, especially now, that you're high risk, low reward in for quite a lot of these heavyweights? Yeah, I think it's been like that for a while now, and. Uh, I think that's part of the problem why it's hard to secure big fights. Uh, yeah, so I think, you know, I'm just going to, you know, keep fighting. If I had to take more, you know, stay busy fights, I'd do that and try to work my way up the rankings just so, so the, the reward is going to be better or higher for these guys. I mean, at 31, <clears throat> you're still quite young in heavyweight terms. That must be kind of... A little bit reassuring, at least, to know, you know, your career is not about to end. You've got time on your side. Yeah, 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 for sure. But, you know, it kind of is uh, a little bit frustrating at times, too. I mean, I'm a serious guy, always training, staying ready, just want my big shot. So, uh, you know, since I fought Fury, had a good uh, deal with Showtime, had a couple of fights with them. And then I was going to fight White, then he pulled out. And then after that, it's been kind of a... A quiet year for me, uh, but you know I'm just staying ready, trying to improve, and you know when I'm gonna get my big fight, I'm gonna be so motivated that you know it's gonna I'm gonna be ready to upset the guy or whatever. 
<laughs> well, your WBO number five in their latest rankings, but this was before uh, Joyce Parker, so presumably Parker will drop down a bit now. So you could be up to number four, which is closing in on a world title shot, especially if it, the belt becomes vacant. Is that kind of your preferred route? I mean, I know you're in the top 15 for all the bodies, but that's the highest. Well, that's good news. I didn't know that, actually. <laughs> I thought I was eight or, or ten or something. I knew that I was eight in WBC, but... I don't really WBC, keep track yeah. of the yeah. I don't keep track of the rankings too much, to be honest. But that's good news. I mean, that makes uh, that shows that I'm I'm getting closer, and also it, it makes some more reward for these guys to fight me because you know the rankings and everything. So I, I think that's good, and you know, any way I can get a title shot, I would love it. That's really you know my goal. Sweden hasn't have a had a heavyweight world champion since Ingmar Johansson in in 1959. So. That's the only one we ever had, so it's time for a new one. Have you been able to get back home to Sweden since the Booker fight? Uh, yeah, I was home for about 10 days. I had a little trip to Mexico with my girlfriend, went to Sweden for about 10 days, came back here. And now, actually, I got my mom visiting. Uh, she's here for about 12 days. I had my brother, his wife, was also here last week. So it's, it's good. Yeah, I got to see my family, which is nice. So more motivation. They must be very proud of everything you're doing and the sacrifices you're making. I think so. I think so. And uh, yeah, I mean, I come from a small place and there wasn't much opportunity with boxing. And I really, I made a name for myself and I'm doing pretty well. I'm not stopping here. I got a lot more to do and I'm very motivated. So I'm, I'm really happy uh, about being here in New York, training with Joey and trying to improve and, yeah, I think they're proud of me. I know I'm also proud of myself from you know coming where I came from and and done pretty well for myself. <clears throat> well, like you say, it's not over yet, so uh, we'll, we'll continue watching the journey with interest. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, anytime, and uh, yeah, let's catch up again soon.